started. So good morning, everybody, and welcome to day three of the University of Malta Grants Week. So today, as we mentioned, is the day dedicated for ERC, the European Research Council grants. Uh, they are very, very prestigious grants aimed at groundbreaking research. And they're considered as an important step to consolidate a researcher's career. Um, yes, so we have um, with us Miss Alina Maria Tomoyaga, I don't know if I said the name correctly, who is an ERC scientific officer. And after that, uh, Miss Lili Kankaya will be joining us again because she is also the national contact point for ERC with a presentation about uh, ERC. After that, we have a panel discussion um, with uh, ERC grantees from the CEU network. Um, and after lunch, we have uh, a session. And now just one note about lunch. The session after lunch, uh, the speaker will be here at, in Valletta in person. And he came all the way from Greece. So if any of you can make it to Valletta instead of online this afternoon, that would be great because you can meet uh, the funding expert and you can ask any questions and you can have a face-to-face -face interaction, which obviously works 10 times better. So if any of you uh, online would like to come, you can come to Valletta at 1 p.m. So we start this afternoon session at 1 p.m. here at Valletta campus at the Aula Prima Hall. And after that, at three o'clock, we have a session by Professor Maria Fart, who is um, an ERC evaluator. So without further ado, I leave the floor to Ms. Alina Maria Tunyaga. Uh, hello, everybody. I'm uh, very happy to be here. Uh, I am Alina Tomoyaga, and uh, I am a scientific officer at the um, uh, European Research uh, Council. Uh, in the, I am a scientific officer for the uh, domain of um, physical science and, and engineering, and I'm uh, coordinating uh, the evaluation panels for uh, mainly for uh, P5 on synthetic chemistry and materials. Um, but uh, sometimes I'm uh, coordinating the panels of P4. Um, uh, physical and analytical chemical sciences and uh, P11, the new P11 panel on uh, materials engineering. Because I am a material scientist uh, by background, I am a Romanian scientist uh, working for uh, ERC for uh, six years. It's very nice to, uh, to be here and to uh, share with you about the funding scheme uh, offered by the uh, European Research Council. So uh, in the next um, almost uh, 30 minutes, I will uh, speak to you about uh, what it is ERC and what uh, uh, they offer, uh, how are the proposals evaluated and by whom, and uh, how, uh, how you can get ready and prepare uh, your proposals, just uh, some, um, some general uh, things. Uh, as you know, uh, European Research Council, um, the funding offered by European Research Council is part of the Horizon Europe uh, uh, funding uh, of the new uh, commission uh, as under the excellent, uh, silent, uh, excellent science pillar uh, together with Marie uh, Curie actions and research uh, infrastructures. Uh, we uh, have a share of uh, 16 million, CRC has a share of 16 billion uh, euro for the seven years of implementation of uh, Horizon Euro and the, uh, Europe, and this is an increase of 22% uh, comparing to the uh, Horizon 2020. In 2021, we have a very good budget, uh, which is equal to 2018, but we don't have two calls that uh, two um, funding schemes that are, uh, are not organized for 2021, and these are synergy and uh, proof of concept uh, grant. What is ERC uh, offering? So of, uh, ERC is an autonomous uh, funding body set up by the European Union in 2017. And it is led by scientists, uh, uh, which uh, uh, they are forming the scientific council. They are uh, uh, truly well-known uh, scientists. Some of them, they have already a Nobel Prize in, vari in various um, 
areas and uh, we have now the uh, a woman president that was announced of uh, on th on uh, 30 of uh, june um what, what ERC is offering is, is offering mainly individual grants uh, for individual researchers, uh, with the exception of uh, Synergy, where three different uh, applicants can get uh, together and apply for a grant, but I will talk to you about this uh, later on. The, in the, these uh, excellent researchers have to, uh, they, they might be from all over the places in the world with the condition that they will spend some time in Europe. The grants are for long term, at least five years for the nor uh, five years for the normal uh, individual grant and six years for synergy. And we found ex uh, excellent science, high risk, high gain, blue skies uh, ideas, research ideas in any field of research. So ERC doesn't um, really uh, has uh, any. Um, fashionable topics that should be uh, more uh, funded than uh, the others. We fund uh, projects in life sciences, in physical sciences and engineering and in social sciences and uh, humanities. What ERC offers in, uh, is uh, mainly independence, recognition, and visibility because uh, usually the ERC grantees, uh, the ERC grants are like a, a label for excellence. Um, we have the, the um, feedback from ERC grantees that uh, their life, their scientific life completely changed after uh, having an ERC grant with um, stronger positions, with um, uh, international recognition through their uh, through invitation to uh, different uh, talks at uh, big scientific events, uh, invitations to write uh, to uh, provide manuscripts uh, in big journals and so on. You can uh, work on a research uh, topic of your own choice with with a team that you are uh, the the only one that uh, that is selecting those uh, those people. So uh, and uh, you gain financial autom autonomy for five years. So you have money for five years to spend it uh, in on research as uh, as you feel um, appropriate. You can negotiate the best working condition with the host institutions. Uh, with the host institution, there are some. Uh, there is an agreement in between you as an individual researcher and the host institution, and you can um, uh, ask uh, uh, ask for additional funding uh, in order to um, to buy a big instrument or to pay the. Uh, work in the field or there are um, many other conditions for the additional funding, but I will talk to you uh, about this later on. Uh, what, uh, what is another advantage of the ERC grants is that we, it uh, facilitates the attraction of uh, top uh, members. So there are many researchers that they aspire to, young researchers that they aspire to an ERC grant and they will love to spend time in an ERC grant environment and uh, applicant that had already has already an ERC and they can learn so much uh, from them. It's also a door for uh, new collaboration, wider collaborations that uh, also uh, really boost your career in, uh, in the future. When, uh, another very important um, aspect of the ERC grants is the portability of these grants. So uh, you can um, uh, you can change the host institution uh, and you can take the entire team with you and the instruments that you have bought through the ERC grant. Why you should choose the, an uh, ERC, um, uh, why, why to choose ERC for, uh, for your, uh, to fund your research is because first of all, you can uh, choose any scientific area, any scientific idea that you, you can uh, have. You, can, you might be as creative as you want, uh, as long as you put it uh, nicely in words, in a convincing matter, uh, manner. And uh, if you uh, convince the panel about the feasibility of your dream idea. 
you have to know that ERC tolerates failure. So uh, we do not penalize and we do not um, avoid paying for, uh, for the spend, uh, expenditure that you have made in the grant just because you, uh, you have been unsuccessful. So, uh, because these are blue sky uh, ideas of research that maybe uh, not be, they are not fundable by, by uh, other um, uh, fund, European funding schemes or by national uh, funding schemes and so on. So you can dream big. But as I said, you have to convince also about that you know what you are doing uh, on this. Uh, it will be uh, having an ERC grant, as I said, it will be a reward for a long time success. So it opens new, uh, new op uh, opportunities for collaborations, new opportunities to uh, visit other labs and to uh, have awards and uh, prestigious invitations to, uh, to talk at a prestigious uh, scientific event. It gives you the um, freedom to experiment because as I said, uh, you, we tolerate failure. So you can at any moment uh, inform us and redirect your scientific um, work uh, if something doesn't work as you have planned it from the beginning or as you imagine that it will work. And uh, it opens the door for you to, uh, to produce high impact uh, papers at a much higher uh, rate uh, because uh, the budget and the time is very um, um, favorable. Uh, and uh, as I've said, uh, it gives you the opportunity also to explore new direction, the directions of uh, research. So uh, it's not necessary to convince you, you, uh, to convince the panel uh, only through uh, writing an idea on something that you have done already and you just go one step ahead. No, we are advising you to even go 10 steps ahead and or completely change your uh, the, uh, direction of research, especially if you apply in advanced grant. Okay, uh, what are the funding schemes that ERC are offering? Uh, so we are offering for different career stages from, uh, from having two years since defending your PhD until uh, very late in your career. So uh, the first scheme that we have for the uh, applicants that they have in between two and seven years from PhD are the starting grants. Uh, and uh, the condition is that you will spend at least 50% uh, of your time on the ERC grant. You can ask for 1.5 million euro for five years. Consolidator grants are dedicated for the applicants that they have uh, in between seven and 12, 12 years since PhD defense. Uh, the condition is that you will spend 40% of your time on the ERC grant and you can ask 2 million euro for five, five years. The advanced grants are for already well-established um, applicants, uh, scientists, and um, you, you uh, are advised to apply for advanced grants if you have more than 12 years since PhD, and you, you should dedicate at least 30% of your time to the ERC grant. You can ask 2.5 million euro for five years. Uh, as I said, any applicants can uh, any applicant can uh, apply for, from all over the uh, all over the world. The condition is that you would spend 50% of your working time in an um, EU member state or an associated country. Uh, the eligibility windows uh, that I've, I've spoken for the starting grants and consolidator grant they can be extended uh, due to uh, several. Um, career breaks that we uh, allow, like on maternity or paternity leave, like a uh, long time illness of a person uh, for in the first degree of, or, or the, um, of the PI itself, of the applicant itself, uh, national service and so on. You can uh, uh, find all these eligibility criterions uh, on the website of uh, ERC. Uh, synergy grants are, uh, are a scheme that uh, is, an, is a funding scheme that is dedicated to uh, two to four applicants, uh, PIs, that they have to, they uh, want to uh, come together with a grant. And the um, condition for this grant is, uh, are the, that um, 
somehow the research cannot go on one without the other. So you have to convince about the synergy in between the uh, research profile of the three applicants and of the uh, research proposal of the three applicants. You cannot come together in synergy grant with three different ideas. We just put together, we apply for a synergy grant. No, you have to demonstrate that you really need one uh, um, of, of the other. So the condition is that uh, you all the three applicants, although one can be from outside of the uh, one can be from outside of uh, European Union, uh, you can ask for uh, 10 million euros for uh, six years. And uh, the main uh, host institution of the main applicant should be uh, in an, in an uh, EU or associated country. Uh, you should uh, spend at least each applicant has to spend at least 30% of their working time of the uh, of the on the ERC grant. Uh, the last funding scheme that we have is the proof of concepts grant, but these are dedicated for the ones that have uh, for the applicant uh, for the PIs, principal investigators, that they have already an ERC grant. So once you have an ERC grant and you have an idea that emerged from the ERC grant, or if you have a very uh, good result that you want to further explore for commercialization or to see uh, to uh, to seek an uh, intellectual property protection. Um, right protection and so on, you can apply for a uh, proof of concept grant of uh, 150,000 uh, euro uh, in order to seek for all these um, aspects that I, I uh, have already uh, spoken about. So for all the ERC grant, who can apply? As I said, excellent researchers uh, of any nationality, any age and or at any current place of work. And as long as you are in, uh, as you are applying with the host institution from the EU uh, or in an associated country, and you spend at least 50 time, 50% uh, of your time in uh, this host institution, you can ask for additional startup funding for the uh, if you are coming from outside outside of Europe and you want to move to uh, Europe and you can keep uh, your affiliation at the home institute outside of uh, Europe. Uh, the ERC application uh, contains three parts. One is a uh, completely administrative one, part A, uh, and it should be, there are forms that should be filled in online. Uh, there is a uh, proposal and applicant information that you have to provide and host institution information and the information about the budget that you will require. This is a novelty in the in the ERC application, as the budget before was part of the Part B2 uh, proposal. Uh, you have to submit as well an, uh, an uh, host institution support letter, your PhD, a copy of your PhD or equivalent diploma. Uh, if uh, you ask for an eligibility, you have to upload all the documents for the extension and so on. Uh, the, the part that is evaluated, the parts that are uh, properly evaluated by the uh, evaluators are the part B1 and part B2. And they are different because the uh, evaluation process goes in two steps, as I will explain uh, later. So part B1, it will be a PDF file that you have to upload it on the platform. And it will, uh, it will contain an abstract and an explanation if you choose a secondary panel. So if you choose two, uh, two panels where you want to submit your uh, proposal, then you have to provide an explanation. Uh, part B1 contains an extended synopsis and a, a recommended model CV, your finding ID, if any, and your track record. Part B2, it's, an it's your scientific proposal in extension. So there you have to provide all the information regarding the methodology, how you will do it with whom and so on. For all this, uh, for all this information, please read the information to applicants for each call that you want to apply on the ERC website or ask the support of your host institution or, or, or the national contact point. How the evaluation of for the ERC uh, takes place. So this is uh, done in two steps. In the first step, uh, uh, all the panel members evaluate proposals that are assigned 
to them by the panel chair uh only the part b1 so only the extended synopsis and your cv they are deciding who is going uh, uh they are deciding uh individually uh their opinion their scientific opinion about the proposal and about the uh, applicant and then they come normally in brussels or at this moment uh, online, we are meeting all together. We have uh, one week meetings with all panel members. We, um, all, each and every of the proposals are discussed. And then a ranking list is uh, decided by, by the panel members with scores A, B, and C. The proposals that they receive the scores B and C they will not pass to step two, so they will receive only the feedback why they or they were not considered good enough for the, by the panel to be passed to step two. And the proposals that they will receive a score, they will pass to step two. In step two, uh, the entire proposal uh, composed by part B1 and part B2 are evaluated by the same panel members or uh, others that they haven't evaluated in part B1 by the decision of the panel chair and some external uh, reviewers that are nominated by the panel members to evaluate as specialists, as true specialists in your proposal, entirely part B1 and part B2, as I said. All these reviews are put together uh, and the panel members are uh, meeting together in, uh, again in pra Brussels or online. And based on this, uh, on all the reviews received for one proposals, uh, an interview is built. So you, if you are invited to the to Brussels, you will receive many questions from the panel members uh, you know, that were drawn in this uh, individual reviews by uh, provided by the external reviewers. And then the panel after the interviews, which is really um, really critical for uh, the final score of an um, of an proposal, uh, the uh, proposals are again ranked, but this time they will receive only the scores A or B. Uh, B means that uh, this time the panel the panel members did not consider that proposal to be fundable. So even if the budget would have been unlimited, uh, they don't consider that 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 proposal is fundable in that competition. But if you receive an A, not necessarily you receive you uh, get funded. At one moment the threshold is. Um, uh, a draw line is uh, is drawn because of the budget. So where the budget uh, limits the uh, the number of uh, grants that will be funded, the the other A's they will be either on the uh, the other uh, proposals that receive an A score, I, they will be either on the reserve list, other uh, this time not not fundable. But the fact that you received an A means that even if if the if the budget would have been unlimited, the panel would have considered it for a budget for funding. The synergy grants are uh, are. Um, uh, taking place in three steps. Uh, in step one, there is a single panel, and, and indeed part B one, as uh, as written by the three, uh, two to uh, four applicants, uh, is evaluated by uh, remote by panel members. And then uh, in uh, in Brussels, uh, it will be a meeting only of the panel chairs and pa uh, panel vice chairs, who will decide. Uh, they they will score A, B, and C the proposal. Proposals. Again, uh, the proposal scored B and C, they will not pass to step two, so they, and they will uh, be rejected. And the proposals uh, scored A, they will pass to step two when the uh, five panels are uh, formed. Uh, the panels are across uh, disciplines, and uh, they will. Uh, the panel members receive the proposals with Part B1 and Part B2. They will evaluate together with external reviewers exactly as for the um, uh, second uh, for the individual grants. And uh, again, a an, uh, list uh, and ranking list will draw will be drawn. And uh, the proposals will be scores, uh, scored only A and B. Uh, proposal scored B, they will be rejected, and proposal scored A, they will be invited for interviews. At the, uh, this is the st step three, the interview. 
at the interview, all the three, all the two to four applicants have to be present. So not only one representative of the consortium, but all the three, uh, all the two to four um, applicants have to be present, uh, have to be present, and they will receive questions for the um, uh, from the panel. Again, the proposals are uh, scored and B with the same meaning as the for the individual um, grants. So according to the budget, uh, a number of proposals will be uh, funded and the rest of the proposals scored A and unfortunately they will be declared ad either on the reserve list, either they will uh, be non-fundable at, at this uh, stage. Who evaluates the, our proposal, the ERC proposals? We have uh, a number of panel members the, uh, that are um, experts uh, from all over the, uh, the world that are um, pre that are coming in Brussels or online to uh, be present in the meetings discussing the proposals one by one. They are nominated by the scientific council and they are chosen from all over the place, all over the, the world. In a panel, uh, we have around eight, uh, 11 to uh, 15 panel members, depending on the number of application usually from the past. They are, also, uh, they are always involved also in step one and in step two, and the panel are uh, renewed every year. Uh, the second type of experts that they evaluated your proposals are the remote referees, what we are calling remote referees. These are external reviewers that are nominated during the step one meetings to evaluate specific pro uh, proposals as experts. And we invite you usually uh, to more than 2000 per call and they evaluate only uh, the proposals in step two. So all, all together part B1 and part B2. Uh, how the proposals are evaluated. The only criterion for the evaluation of the ERC proposal is excellence. So excellence of the research proposal, meaning uh, groundbreaking nature of the research proposed, how ambitious, how ambitious this research is, if, if it is feasible, and another uh, and the uh, characteristic of the synergy grant is it if they uh, if the proposal goes beyond what one PI could do alone. As I said, it's very important in synergy to uh, show that um, all together you create a grant, not three grants separately. Another criterion is the excellence of the principal investigator who has to uh, demonstrate intellectual capacity and their creativity. And in synergy grants that you have to demonstrate how um, each um, applicant, uh, what each applicant brings to the group and why the group uh, is so well done uh, together. Uh, oh, you can find on the ERC website and in the, if you read the info to applicants, you can find exactly the questions that the evaluators have to uh, respond to uh, in order to define the groundbreaking nature, the ambition, the feasibility and so on, and how they evaluate your CV, which kind of questions they have to respond. This is important for you to know what kind of uh, questions they have to respond. When you build your profile, you, when you read, uh, when you write the proposals you should try to address each and every of, and make it easy for the panel members to respond in a way or another to those uh, questions what is not an evaluation criterion for erc but it is usually for uh, national funding or in an, any other uh, european funding scheme is host institution societal impact for the erc uh, for erc is very important the scientific impact how the science will gain uh, when uh, your proposal will be finished and not necessarily so societal impact of course it's a plus but it's not evaluated as a criterion and it will not be held against your proposal if there is not not a direct um, a societal impact uh, drawn up from your uh, from your research. Uh, the specific thematics targeted uh, currently by uh, European Union, like the climate change, like the uh, health and so on, they are not evaluated per se. So we do not fund uh, proposals per quota according to the line of research that you address to. 
the applicability of your hypothesis. So as you know, ERC is funding completely, I mean, uh, from the fundamental research, complete fundamental research until applicable uh, until applied research, like in engineering panels. So it's not necessary to have an application drawn for your research. It can be purely theoretical and purely fundamental. And ESE really welcomes those kind of proposals that they can change uh, the science of the future. Uh, interdisciplinarity, uh, multidisciplinarity or close disciplinarity are not an evaluation criterion per se. All the interdisciplinary proposal uh, uh, is, uh, they are treated as the ones that are addressing a very a narrow research line uh, and it's not necessary. I mean, it's not a plus if you go uh, in many directions that a new address, uh, it's not a plus and not a minus to address uh, many directions. And of course, we don't uh, we don't evaluate uh, your age, nationality, or gender. We don't consider this. We uh, you are evaluated according to your career stage. What are the panel members looking for in your proposal? So they they will look if the uh, if your what you are proposing goes really beyond the uh, state of the art and why your proposed research would be important and when I, we are speaking about why is important we are not speaking in societal impact but in scientific impact and what they are looking is also if this if it's timely why it is this moment when this research has to be uh, has to be done if you address an research uh, idea that is quite old, let's say, and you want to revive it, let's say even from uh, 30 or 40 years ago, and you want to revive it, it's very important to explain why now. What is changed now comparing to 30 years ago and why your, your research is important now? Of course, you have to address the feasibility issue because you have to convince the panel members that although it's blue sky idea, it's still feasible and you want to, you know what to do. Uh, and how to do it, and you know the risks, and you have some uh, some uh, plans to address it, even if it's very, very high risk. If there is absolutely impossible to define how you will address those, that risk at this moment, you really have to explain the gain. Only like this, you will convince the panel members to fund even a, a very crazy idea that uh, seems impossible at this moment. You have to explain the gain. From the point of view of the applicant, what the panel members are, are looking at, the, and they are in, instructed to look for the uh, next leaders in the field. So why you, are, you would be the best person to carry this researcher and how competitive you are at this career at your career stage. So if you have two years since PhD, you don't have to be at the same level of, with the person that has seven years after PhD, but you have to, 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 to demonstrate what you have done during the PhD in the two years since your PhD and why you should be consider, considered internationally competitive at this career stage. Uh, and also we have to, or they have to look for some evidence, especially in starting grants, for some evidence that you can work in the, independently. This is a topic that is very difficult, especially in the host institutions where you have to be always in the shadow of a big scientist, but you have to explain your own role in each and every of the big publications that you have. What is also important, if you are coming from industry, and uh, you have you don't have so many publications. This independent uh, independent work you can uh, you can address it through uh, what was your position and what how the company uh, let's say uh, how you contributed to the development of, of the company when you return back to research how you use the experience that you had in industry and you are uh, using it now in uh, research or in clinical uh, development and so on. Uh, in what it regards the applicant, what the what the uh, what the um, uh, profile of the starting grants, for example, of the starting grantee should be that you you should have a potential for scientific independence so in maturity. So how I uh, what I how I said it before, is very important that you show what was your contribution in the big publication? What was your contribution in the grants if you are part of the team and how the team was uh, more valuable because you were there? 
uh, and you uh, and as a consolidator on the other hand you have to have already evidence of scientific independence so this means that you have to have already uh, publications by your by yourself without the PhD supervisor, without the postdoc supervisor, or if you have only with them, explain very well why is this the case. They are looking at you can demonstrate your track record uh, by publications. Yeah, uh, what kind of, in where they were published, how they are cited, what was your contribution in? Present a list of invited presentation to conferences if you have any or to any scientific events and so when you were the person that was invited and not your PhD supervisor. Another uh, indication of your um, international recognition let's see it can be awards prizes if you are a member of an academy and so on and also if you have patents and don't don't be shy and mention each and every of these um, uh, these outcomes and achievements of your career in advanced grants what is very important is that you are already you have already a strong leadership so you have to show that you have already your group uh, that is well built by us and you have a significant track record in the last 10 years this is the most important that it has to be in the last 10 years so it's not necessary so because in advanced grants you compete with the people that they have 30 years from phd and people with 12 years from phd the erc limited the, the track record to 10 years and this is very important important and what is important in advanced grants is also to somehow to propose an idea that goes outside of your comfort zone in research so not in the same in the same area because it can be perceived as incremental so somehow although you are using the experience that you have you go outside of your uh, research direction and uh, in uh, advanced grants, it's very important to uh, present supervision of students or uh, of a team in any environment. And if you had had other grants, or as I said, if you have work in industry, show how the company uh, gained from your presence there. Okay, and now about the additional budget that you can uh, ask, it can be up to 1 million, uh, this regarding the um, individual uh, funding scheme that you apply for. So 1 million for starting grant for consolidated and advanced grants and up to 4 million for synergy grants. And these are for startup costs if you are moving from an, uh, from outside of Europe to an, to an uh, host institution in uh, Europe. Uh, if you purchase uh, purchase uh, la large equipment equipment uh, if you want to have access to large facilities that are very expensive or uh, if you have to pay for experimental field uh, work uh, in an, in the normal budget uh, the eligible costs are salaries of the pi postdoc students technical staff senior staff equipment minor or ma major uh, consumables, travels, uh, and overheads, subcontracting, uh, publications, and do not forget to request for to take into consideration uh, budget for open access to publications, because it's an eligible cost and it's mandatory under Horizon Europe. When you prepare your proposal, think, think about how your idea is novel and excellence. Give, give your proposal to other uh, colleagues of yours to read and to give you an, an, uh, an critical feedback on. You have to be ambitious and very, uh, very daring. Uh, don't, uh, don't be shy and think that no one will believe you. Uh, just try it. Put it outside. You'll receive a feedback uh, from um, from the panel members. You have to write it in a way to grab the interest and attention of the reviewers, not with long sentences, because uh, although most of our panel members are not natively English speakers, and um, it's, it's very difficult to read when the phrases and paragraphs have no stop and, uh, uh, and so on. Write for the panel. So somehow try to understand the community where you are sending your proposal. And especially when you have an interdisciplinary proposal. For example, if you have a proposal in biomaterials and you address, think about, do you write for clinicians, for pharmacists in LS domain? 
uh, or you write for the material scientists in a PE domain and you have to address more the part of the uh, of the material of the materials and try to use the language of the material scientists although the panel members are instructed to look as a generalist at your proposal especially in step one do not include unnecessary partners and collaborators because uh, you have to convince the panel that it's your own proposal and that you can do it okay there can be gaps of expertise that you cannot cover in some of the working packages that you propose uh, you can put collaborators but don't overdo it don't try to put the, your entire proposal on that collaborator and give it uh, give the all the floor to that collaborator because it can it can come the the question what if that collaborator doesn't respect the part of the bargain that you you are making with them you have to show to the uh, panel that you can do it even if that collaborator will uh, will come uh, will uh, not want to uh, to participate in your grant anymore so you have to be on top of your uh, proposal it's important that you proofread your proposal before submitting. Okay, we don't penalize the proposals that are written in a bad English or with mistakes, but it's not a, it's not good looking, and it, and then it's an it's an indication for the panel that you didn't care enough about your uh, and about your proposal, and uh, you cannot you cannot uh, completely fall because of this. But it's not. It's not. Uh, if if you will be the the proposal to be decided in or out, you don't want to put an uh, something on the on the shoulders of the panel members to give an impression that they didn't, they haven't enjoyed your proposal. Uh, and you have to know that you can revise your proposal by the call uh, deadline, many times. You have to uh, inform yourself on the ERC website from the national contact point. Uh, look on the, uh, on the all the frequently asked, uh, asked question and be sure that you are eligible. Be uh, careful that if you applied in the past, there are some restrictions and you cannot apply uh, if you received B or C uh, proposal uh, scores. And um, these restrictions are different for synergy grants. So please have a look uh, at the information to applicants to see exactly the conditions for eligibility. The host institution, as I said, the grants are, port are portable and you can change them in the project slide. You can change it in the project life. Uh, life you, uh, you can ask and you should ask their support for the preparation of the ERC grant. And I'm sure that you will receive very good support there. They can also contact us and uh, ask many, uh, many questions and support from the ERC to, uh, for this. And make sure to have the host institution le uh, letter ready in time to submit uh, to submit it on the platform uh, when you choose the panel as i said uh, we don't have a thematic pan uh, panels that are uh, there to fund um, specific areas they are uh, just there to in order to match easily the expertise of uh, certain experts with the um, topics proposed in certain proposals they are offering the right level of uh, expertise and usually they are quite similar in size, especially if we reported that the number of applications that we receive in, uh, in, uh, in research direct direction and uh, the budget is allocated by, uh, by demand. You have, to in, you have to choose one submission panel, but you can indicate a second one if your proposal is interdisciplinary. And you can um, select one to four descriptors that is uh, characterizing your uh, proposal and some free uh, keywords. Into, uh, starting from 2021, ERC has 27 panels, not 25 like in the past, but 27, with two new panels, one in P physical science and then engineering, PE11 materials engineering, and one in social sciences and humanities, SS SH7, human mobility, environment, and space. Also have a look, if you know about the uh, ERC funding schemes, have a look in all the revision of the panels because uh, all domains have had a revision of the descriptors and what they are addressing, especially in LS domain. Uh, what, how, when you prepare your proposal, how you should address the, the differences in between Part B1 and Part B2, because Part B2 should not be a, a fidel copy of the 
um, of Part B1. In Part B1, you should address, first of all, groundbreaking nature and how, the, how your research goes beyond the state of the art. This is the most important uh, point to be written in Part B1 and to be uh, extensively uh, treated in Part B1. Uh, you have to, because of the limitation of the pages, you have to be concise in what you are uh, writing. You should provide um, some methodological approach, but not uh, really in details, because it reassures the panel members about the feasibility. And uh, you should uh, address a little bit from the risk part, at least to convince the panel members that you know uh, how, do, uh, how they will be, uh, which are your risks. Uh, you also have to address the uh, scientific, your uh, all the details regarding your uh, CV and uh, your track record. Uh, now, uh, in Part B2, as I said, it should not be uh, a, co a, a copy of Part B1. Uh, make sure in both Part B1 and Part B2 that you give full references. Uh, indeed, the pan panel members and the, ext uh, the external reviewers, when they have Part B1 in hand, they have also Part B1. So you can refer in Part B2 to details from Part B1 because they are reading it together. But you cannot do it the other way around to, uh, to refer in Part B1 to details from Part B2 because uh, in, uh, who evaluates in Part B1 in step one only part B1, they do not see yet the part B2. So you have to explain the hypothesis and provide pre preliminary, preliminary data in extension. You can also mention the preliminary data in step one if your idea is really blue sky and you have, problem, you, you have to convince the panel members that you can do it. But these details, you can provide them in part B2. Because in step one, you have, to, you have to convince the panel to give you a chance for step two. So it's your invitation to the interview, the part B1. Uh, you have to justify the requested re, uh, resources in the, in, the, uh, in the budget area, and it will be evaluated in uh, step two. Uh, when you build your uh, budget, uh, keep, uh, keep in mind that all everything has to be well justified. What is not explained, and especially in what regards the equipment and the uh, personal, the personal um, budget, the, the budget for personnel, it can be cut by the panel. Uh, by the panel. So you have to duly justify why you need that instrument and what you would, uh, how it will be used in your project. Uh, and if you uh, are asking for additional budget, that one really has to be justified because the panel members are um, uh, instructed to, to uh, uh, specifically uh, address the topic of the additional budget, why it is requested and if it is justified. If you are uh, invited to the interviews, you have to show curiosity, you have to show that is your idea and you have to be proud of that. Keep in mind that you had one in three chance, you have one in three chances, first of all, to be funded. And, uh, and secondly, less than 30% have passed to step two. So you have to be uh, proud of that because uh, imagine that we receive more than 4,000 application in a call. So the fact that you are invited to step two, it is a moment uh, of, of pride and you have to be proud of that. Uh, you have to, uh, when you do, when you prepare your presentation, please uh, follow all the instructions of the, that you will receive from the ERC, from my colleagues from ERC regarding how the interview will be conducted because each and every panel has a specificity of, of the interview. You have to stick to the time. This is important in each uh, panel and be prepared for, uh, be, be prepared for, uh, for questions from a lead reviewer from panel chair or from panel members. If you are asked many questions by the same person, don't take it personally that the person has something against you. That person is, design, is, a dead, uh, is assigned to be the lead reviewer for your proposal. So that's why they are just building together all the questions of the external reviewer. And that's why that person puts you more, more questions than the others. You have to demonstrate that you know what you are proposing. So you know the risk, you have a plan to mitigate. Uh, if, you, if you need collaborators in order to, um, to cover an expertise gap that you need in your proposal, just um, mention how you manage them 
and how you still add on top, because as I said, it's very important to show that is your proposal. When you are coming for the interview, it's very important that you are aware of what it was published in the meantime, from your application moment until the time of the interview, because the panel member are instructed to evaluate the novelty and the groundbreaking nature of your uh, proposal until the moment of the interview, not until the moment of the application. Application. So if something was published in between, it will affect the novelty of your idea. So that's why just be prepared and try to see if a publication appeared, how do you tackle that? How would you change your research? Because you, you can, you, this will, be, will come for sure as a uh, question at the interview. Uh, you have to uh, show them uh, how, you, how the science will gain from your proposal. This will come also as a question at the interview. So you, you have to be very uh, much prepared or, uh, regarding your um, groundbreaking nature of your uh, proposal. Typical reasons for a rejection during an ERC evaluation is when the scope of the proposal was either too narrow, so not ambitious enough, either too broad and unfocused. So the PI, put too many ideas, but they are not connected to each other. He, they want to do everything, but actually they, uh, there are no details on how they will do it. This, these are reasons to, uh, to reject the proposals, especially in step one or in step two. Incremental research most of the times will not pass to step two, step two so when it's not a completely new idea. Collaborative projects give the uh, the uh, information to the up to the panel that I mean a, pa a project with too many collaborators give the the impression to the panel that the PI is not the leader of this pan of this proposal and usually does not pass to step two, and a work plan that is not detailed enough or is not clear. Uh, in step two, they will. They, it's no. It's a. It's a no for being funded. Usually, an insufficient risk analysis and not addressed at the interview. It's also a no to be uh, usually funding. And the most disappointing part for part uh, for the um, uh, panel members is to see a similar part B one and part B two. Regarding the principal investigator, typical reasons for rejections are insufficient track record or uh, insufficient uh, uh, demonstration of the potential for uh, independence. At the, at the interview, if you respond vaguely, if you don't convince that is your own idea and you always put it on the collaborators, yeah, I have it, I know someone that can, can do it and so on. If you uh, dream an idea, but you don't have yet preliminary results, it will be a debate. And, maybe you will receive a non-fundable A. So somehow, you know, if you have a very blue sky idea, try in between the moment of application and the moment of the interview to, to gather some preliminary results. And uh, remember that you can redress indeed, but uh, see uh, in, uh, what uh, you cannot redress on scientific reasons. You know, just because the scientific opinion uh, is a different than yours or because you thought that it's groundbreaking and the panel members not this you cannot uh, redress for so you can redress only for an obvious mistake in the uh, in the uh, in the process if you are rejected this is very important keep trying we know very big names nobel prize winners that they haven't they did not get the erc grant from the first application so keep trying when you are reapplying, first of all, keep in mind that you are basing your uh, proposal on a feedback that you already received once. So re, uh, read very well that feedback. Try to understand why a, a panel, of, uh, panel of members have seen your proposal as not new enough and why or why they weren't convinced. So try to uh, build on that uh, feedback. Uh, my, my final uh, information that I want to give is the 2021-2022 call calendar for ERC applications. So we have advanced grants uh, still open. Uh, starting grants and consolidator are already under evaluation. The deadline is already closed. So, but under uh, advanced grants are still open. They opened on the 20th of May and uh, the application uh, deadline is on 31st of August, 2021. 
Next week, Synergy Grant will be open for 2022. So Synergy Grant 2022 will open on 15 July and uh, the application will clo close on 10 November 2021. Starting Grant 2022, they will open on 23rd September 2021 and will close uh, the application on um, 13 January 2022. Consolidator will open on 19 October with a deadline for submission on 17 March. And advanced grant, ah, sorry, 2022, they will open on 20 January and will close in uh, April. P please keep in mind that for advanced grants is the first time when the application is so early in a year. So it's not anymore on May, but it will be January to April, not May to August as usual. And uh, you can find many information uh, and there are ERC classes on the ERC uh, website and you will find there are many other opportunities uh, to, uh, to, be, uh, to be informed. You have your national contact point that you can, uh, you can uh, contact and uh, many other information you find on our uh, Facebook, li LinkedIn, YouTube or uh, Twitter. Uh, Pages. Thank you very much, and I'm open for uh, discussion uh, for uh, questions. Thank you very much, uh, Lina, for this uh, detailed uh, presentation and very good overview of the ERC program. Uh, my name is Lily, and I'm the national contact point for the ERC um, uh, in Malta. I work at the Malta Council for Science and Technology. Uh, I will just try to share my screen so that I can share my uh, presentation. I see that I was uh, quite over time. Sorry for this. Okay, I'll try to be, to be brief myself and uh, just highlight the, the most important parts. So can you confirm that you see my screen, please? Yes. Great. So as I mentioned, I uh, work at the Malta, the Malta okay. Council for Science and Technology. Uh, we here um, are hosting uh, all the national contact points for Horizon Europe um, under one roof. Uh, we are also in charge of the EuroAccess Malta uh, portal. This is the team. Uh, for the time being, we are six national contact points with Antea Fabri being our national coordinator. I just want to highlight here our social media uh, links. So please register on our website and um, in order to receive our mail shots and uh, newsletters. We also have social media. We have uh, our Facebook page, uh, LinkedIn uh, and YouTube channel. And you can find us by looking Horizon uh, Europe Malta. You will receive this presentation and the links um, afterwards. So what do we provide as a service, as an NCP service? Basically one-to-one -one consultation partner searches uh, were relevant, of course. Uh, we advise on administrative procedure, um, project uh, implementation um, and management, of course, as well. And we also review the proposals uh, before uh, submission. So for those that are preparing um, um, ERC proposals, I, I kindly advise you to contact me and, and, uh, and we can have, of course, a first one-to-one -one meeting to, to discuss the proposal. But then even when, once you have a draft, please um, make use of that service and, and send your draft for, for a review. We do not review the technical part, but we'll give you some tips and tricks on how to approve the proposal. We also have quite a lot of supporting uh, support materials, um, guides, uh, recordings of uh, different uh, trainings um, uh, that we had in the past or um, uh, uh, colleagues from, from abroad also organized. Uh, so please get in touch. Um, uh, with us uh, in order to, to benefit further from um, additional materials that may be not available um, online. Um, we recently organized um, ERC Info Day and the recording uh, is available on our YouTube channel. I included the link uh, here so uh, you, you can access it directly from here. Uh, in January, we also had a very good training on a, on a platform with, with a lot of materials, again, organized uh, together with um, Yellow Research and, of course, the University of Malta. And we also had um, a few sessions where uh, we had proposal reading um, days where participants could join and we could work on, on real uh, proposals and, and highlight the main uh, points there, which I think was quite 
useful uh, and appreciated by the participants. I just want to present you a um, few of our um, uh, national support schemes. Um, in particular, I'm going to talk to you about the IPAS Plus and the new scheme that we have recent, recently launched towards support of ERC applications. So just to start with uh, IPAS, we have recently closed uh, the first call for this year, but we are going to open uh, the second call uh, in October. Um, the IPAS option B provides the opportunity for um, applicants that are preparing a Horizon Europe application um, being given an ERC application um, um, because um, for to, to be eligible for option B, one needs to be uh, the coordinator. However, for ERC, um, the host the host entity is considered as coordinator and thus ERC applications are also eligible here. So we'll provide up to 5,000 euros for the applicant um, to look for an external consultant with, with proven track record and experience um, um, in, in the particular call um, and get additional support uh, for the preparation of the actual application. So as I mentioned, uh, we will open again the call uh, in October. Currently, um, the, the, the first call applications are under uh, evaluation. And now uh, I'm excited to talk to you about the ERC support scheme. This is something new. It, it, it's the first time that, that we are launching su such a scheme. Um, uh, it's currently just opened um, um, like two weeks ago and um, it, it will remain open until 20th August. So the idea here is um, we have again two options, option A and option B. Option A is related to something that the uh, ERC executive agency um, uh, has initiated um, recently, uh, which is a mentoring, which is called mentoring initiative. Basically we did apply um, and uh, we'll get support from ERC. We will receive a list of um, um, experts, we, which are basically uh, potential mentors for our local can candidates. Um, uh, this, will be, um, this will be usually either um, ERC grantees or, or panel members, um, and we can match our, our local applicants um, to get mentoring um, support uh, from, from these experts. We can cover expenses of up to 5,000 euros, but then it's up to the agreement of, of course, of the, of the expert to actually agree uh, on the fees um, uh, required from, from their end. Option B um, then gives the opportunity for the applicant to attend online or physical uh, proposal writing trainings related to ERC specifically. Uh, here we can cover expenses of up to 2,000 euros. So one applicant can, can actually benefit of up to 7,000 euros from the ERC uh, support scheme. Um, how, how it will work, we will we'll provide 40% pre-financing, 40% um, will, be, will be then uh, topped up once uh, we receive the final report. Um, here is important to mention that um, once the, the, the grant agreement is signed with, with us, um, MCST for this ERC support scheme, you will have um, uh, one year to actually implement the activities that, that you are planning and up to one and a half year then to submit um, uh, ERC proposal. So the final 20% uh, will be received once there is a proof of submission um, of the ERC proposal um, through the funding contenders portal. Um, we do not expect you to, I mean, uh, the, uh, the support that, that we are providing, we do not expect you, uh, we will uh, we'll not give you the money um, if you are successful, but it, 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 of course, we, we wish that everyone is successful, but uh, we understand that this is very competitive call and um, not everyone will make it to there. But of course, we provide full support just on the proof that um, um, proposal has been submitted. The call is now open, as I mentioned, and um, I have included in the slides the link. Uh, the deadline is 20th August, uh, and then we, are, we will probably launch again the call um, sometime in October or uh, November. Probably will be October in order to, to see maybe uh, for those interested in the starting grant who could not make it that time, um, but yet the deadline is not yet um, defined. That's it from my end. 
um, you will receive the presentation, as I said, with, uh, with the links. If you have any questions, um, I'm here to reply. Thank you. Just a moment, we have a question, right? Uh, the question is in the chat. Is it towards uh, me? Uh, it's it's towards, towards Alina. The question is for Alina. Alina. Uh, yes, I'm trying to... Uh, I'm trying to read this all. Are there any tips Sorry, I'm trying to read it now. So any tips on dealing with the high risk high gain? Yourself? Can you hear me well? Hello. Yes, yes, we hear yes, you. Please, okay. uh, so, uh, you so any tips on dealing with the high risk high gain uh, requirement? Um, yeah, so as I, as I said, so it, it's very important that the idea is very new. So uh, and indeed, when it's uh, when it's new and haven't hasn't been done before, or uh, you or it's, then then it's risky. Of course, then the gain it comes naturally. But the thing is that um, how to say it? So you have to very uh, address if 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 you address a completely new research idea that has not been ever tried again you have to uh, somehow support it with some preliminary results or with a very uh, well-drawn working plan. So even if it's highly, highly risky, you have to explain to the panel members that you know how risky it is, especially because there is nothing in the liter literature that would support your data, but that you have a plan to go step by step towards achieving what you are proposing. The gain, you can even explain it that it will come. So, because why would you uh, why why would you propose a blue sky idea only if the gain is high? I mean, only from this point of view. On the other hand, if you are going on an idea that is already tried but unsuccess unsuccessful till now, then there is some uh, precedent, and you have to explain there. Uh, in in this case, this is your risk i mean the the thing is that many people tried so the, your one of your risk is that you will be uh, it, your your hypothesis will fail as the others but you first of all in these cases you have to explain very well that you are aware that is it it, it is uh, many times tried and unsuccessful unsuccessful and why your uh, approach would be I mean, why you, why you hope that your approach would be successful? And again, preliminary data will uh, will help you if you will convince more the panel or a very well drawn plan. Uh, from this point of view, again, the the gain comes. Uh, the problem is that sometimes there are ideas that are highly risky, but the panel members do not see the gain from the point of view of, okay, it's very risky. It's, uh, for, for example, a fantastic uh, chemistry, for example, how you propose, wh what you propose and so on. But the thing is that why is the gain? Because in the end, the reaction would be more expensive than what is now. Uh, it will never be, uh, never go forward because it will be expensive, creates more toxicity. So where is the gain? From this point of view, just trying something new but uh, the, the gain is not there. So from also you can put it from, from all these angles, the gain. And most of, most of the times it's put on the science is how the science will gain from, uh, from such an idea being implemented. But when, when I see, when what I see from sitting in the panels problematic is when the risk is high, the panel members, they love the daring and the ambition of the applicant but when they go to to um, uh, to understanding, okay, and what do we learn from it? What what would we learn that actually, yeah, it can't be done like this, but it's so expensive that will be just another idea that will stay on a, a, in a draft somewhere, draw somewhere. So uh, from this point of view, like this, you should uh, you should think about uh, this balance. 
but again, preliminary results, not uh, so not necessarily published ones, so because uh, you can convince the panel members with preliminary data and published ones, uh, helps you a lot. And uh, a very well drawn um, uh, um, scientific approach, methodology, okay? Working package is exactly what you want to do, how you want to do it and so on. I hope I responded to, to your question. The second question is, um, is it considering as something negative to include a lot of references from third parties other than your team to justify? No, no, from, your, from this point of view, no, because if you include uh, references from third parties, not only from, if you include references from your team, is you show that uh, you show experience, you show that uh, you have a background, you show that you have a very solid um, base for your project. But if you include from, from others, this means that you know the, the state of the art. So you have to show that you, you know the state of the art. On the other hand, if you don't reference exactly the most important works, then they can say, yeah, the applicant is not aware well aware of, of what it is done in the field. So you have to actually reference also people from outside of your team, not only your, your own, especially to justify your objectives, your idea and the methodology. Because if you say, I want to do it like this, because before was do, done, it was done like this, like this, like this, but most of them, although maybe successful, most of the ideas, although successful, they had each and every some glitches. You know, so you demonstrate you can use exactly those uh, third parties references to justify why you are doing it, how you want to do it. Okay, I hope I respond to the to the both que to the two questions. Release on you. Hello. Hello, Lily, we have a, que a question for you. Yes, I, I just saw it in the chat. Um, so uh, basically myself, I'm not only the national contact point, but I'm also the program committee member. So in that way, uh, in, in, in that way, I'm, I'm um, actually uh, having the benefit to receive uh, also the, 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 the scores uh, of the proposals. Uh, otherwise the NCPs, uh, the NCP coordinator is the one that will receive um, the scores, but not the NCPs uh, um, themselves. But from my end, uh, I have the benefit to, to actually receive them, being the program committee member. Okay. Okay, so did, did, you, did you answer the question? And then... There's no more question, no more question for the, from the audience. 